we owe much to her in keeping the knowledge of core energetic as pure as it can be. So I introduce to you a much beloved of Jack Erwin, a mother of Nicole, Karen Wilner. Basically, I'm a body reader. I read bodies. Um, I learn about people, their past, their present, their future, by looking at their bodies. So core energetic practitioners like myself uh, have relied on body readings. They're kind of our Rorschach test. Any of you ever take a Rorschach? Well, whatever. Anyhow, they're our way of uh, assessing early childhood wounds and other problem areas um, clients enter therapy to resolve. Uh, the body readings actually have been clinically proven probably over 100 years uh, to have some merit so that people reading bodies in many different countries over many years with many different groups come up pretty much with the same clinical findings. So they're clinical research, but there is definitely something to them. You don't sit from your, across from a client head to head. You bring your whole person, your body, your mind, your spirit, and your emotion, your soul, to that session. So you need to be in touch with all of you when you're with another person in your work. So self-reading is important for you both professionally and personally. Uh, it will help you cope with changes in your life, your practice, your personality, your past, your present, your future, and it will help you change. And change if you're going to stay alive, is a necessary part of life and, and death and the whole transition. So that's me and John. Uh, so I, I don't have a lot of pictures of me with me, so I brought this one out. Uh, but when I, when I was looking at my own body, when I first analyzed my body, uh, I observed a difference between my head and my body. Uh, you can probably observe the same difference, but so my head was smaller, tighter, uh, more intense. My aura was gray. Uh, at, I'm not saying it's gray in that picture because I was with John, whose aura can be gray when you're with John. But nevertheless, I saw this kind of difference, and in my body, there it was sweeter. It was the energy was better somehow. Um, and as I looked at myself you know, I began to realize, well, here in the head, where do we carry a lot of fear, you know? A lot of fear, a lot of negativity, a lot of judgments about ourselves, about other people. So in just taking that look at myself, it began to say, okay, you know, I want to change. What can I do about this? So then I, uh, I got this rubber band. See? And then, have you ever done this? I'm also a behavioralist. At heart. I'm a behavioralist at heart. So you when you have a judgment and your wrist gets raw and you stop judging. Uh, the issue is, you don't have to, you know, core is not the only therapy in the world, but anyhow. <laughs> you, want, you want change, right? You want to do what works. Um, so the issue is using your sense of yourself, your view of yourself to help yourself make changes that will be in your interest will be beautiful. So many of us have uh, this disconnect or this cut at the neck, you know, and then there's all the fear and the judgment. So that's something, anyhow, I saw it in myself. You can work on it in you. In this case, what came up for me was uh, this kind of masochistic place in myself, the overcharge of energy, which you can kind of see around my belly. Um, and it goes back to being super controlled by my mom. First, she kind of deprived me and, and didn't nurture me when I was little because my father was in the war and she was at home with her parents. And um, my grandfather took care of me. And even though he loved me, he couldn't give me that maternal energy uh, the way I needed it. So you see some very thin wrists, ankles, thin lips, stuff like that. But then 
my mother became very controlling. She knew how to, you know, put me under her thumb, and she did. And I said, okay, put me under your thumb. So, but somewhere I really resented this, and anger built up. But it built up in my body. Not, it didn't come out of my mouth. And um, so I saw this, again, when I got married, I felt uh, that I was being controlled. And I, you know, brought it up, and he said he didn't. And that's probably true, because I project that out there, that you're going to control me, and I'm going to shut up and let it happen. And then there's anger. So that's in my body. Um, so uh, what I'd like to encourage you to do, let's see if there's another slide here. We know. Oh, there's John, okay. How many of you in here in this class uh, room knew John personally, met him? Okay, good, great, terrific. Okay, so that was him, I think, at Tremurdy preparing to speak. Um, so I'd like to encourage you uh, to greet your body in a new way. And what's really important uh, is to look at your body without judgment. It's really hard. Most of us have so many judgments about ourselves, let alone other people, and so much shame. And it doesn't matter. You could be the most beautiful person in the world. You could be exquisite, and you're still going to have judgments and shame. Don't know why it's there. So you have to really work hard to put that aside and to just look at your body as objectively as possible. So what I'd like you to do for just a minute, and you only get a minute. If you do this longer, you're going to use up my time. So you have to do this quickly. Uh, I want you to, to talk to someone next to you or near you. And I want you to tell them about some change. Don't do this until I finish. I want you to tell them about some change in your body in the last six months to a year, something you've noticed that's changed. Now, maybe you have, may, it can be as little as a pimple. When you do body reading, you look at everything. You're not just looking. I, I look at every hair on somebody. I mean, I might not tell them about it, but I'm looking at it. So you're, I want you to think about some change. It could be a mole. It could be a pimple. It could be a new little roll of fat. Um, or if you don't have one, make it up so that you have something to say to the person. So turn to somebody, and they, they don't have to respond. Just tell them something that you think you've noticed. You've got one minute for this. <laughs> I looked into this school, and it was a school of communications at the University of Pennsylvania. So I applied, and I got accepted. So I started another master's degree program, and this one was in communications. And my, I met this guy, and his name was Ray Birdwhistle, and he was an anthropologist, very well known in that form of anthropology. He's called the father of kinesics. So I studied with him for the next few years. And kinesics are small muscular movements. Now, they're not really used to talk about individuals, but we look at them more in large groups of people. So how many eye blinks, things like that. Uh, and it's fascinating. And, but through Ray and that work, I got so interested in the body. But I still wanted to be a psychologist, so it was a little. Um, Someone told me, you've got to go see this guy named John Paracas, that guy. So he was coming to Philadelphia to a humanistic psychology conference, big conference, 300 people. And, and I went to this uh, workshop he was doing, and all 300 people were there because everybody wanted to know about their bodies, right? So um, he was there, this little man in the suit, and um, had a little stage in front of him and asked who wanted to come up and have a body reading. And people were, ah, you know me. So people would come up 
And I guess they got undressed. I can't remember that part. I was still very prudish myself. But, um, uh, and he read their body. And I was in awe. I never, this was like, even though I had been looking at people's body, looking at communications, how I'd look, been looking at eye blinks. Here was this guy who could just look at a person and tell them things, and they were saying, yes, yes, yes. And I was blown away. Energy travels through our bodies when we're healthy and unblocked. So do this with me. Everybody take your right hand, put it on your right ankle, and just bring it up the right side of your body. Everybody just move your hand up the right side of your body. Good. And then you're going to get to your solar plexus and you're going to cross over. And then it's going to start moving up the left side of your body. So now it's going to move up all the way up. And then you're going to cross at the soft palate. It crosses, uh, 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 crosses there and comes back down, OK? So that's energy. When you are unblocked, that's how your energy would be moving. Millions of streams of energy moving through your body if you were unblocked. The body gets its shape in lots of different ways. I mean, definitely genetics plays a role, right? There's some genetic stuff in you. We know about epigenetics now. We're adding it to our curriculums uh, because of Things happen to people, even in the womb, uh, that changes your genetic structure, right? Uh, there's modeling. If uh, your mom stood a certain way, maybe that's how you stand, right? That's certainly going to affect your body. Wow. And people really copy the bodies of people they hate. I don't know why. So <laughs> it's like, I'm going to get a handle on you. I'm going to stand exactly like you stood. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, most of all, at least for our work, we're looking at how energy shapes the body. That's what you're taught in your classes to read. So, you know, like in this picture, which I wasn't really going to talk about, but you can kind of see the upper displacement there, you know, the overcharge, uh, and even the, the thinness in the legs. However, the body is plastic. So if this person came in and worked with any one of you, some of that would start to change. Slowly, but change. Uh, so it is reversible. It's not set in stone, but you have to do the work. So what John brought into the body reading part of it, in my opinion, he taught me all that stuff. But he also taught me a lot more, because he taught me to really respect the aura and the chakras, uh, to, to use that energy, to see it, to try to understand it. And in that way, I have a better sense of where the person is right now. You know, what's going on right now? And also a sense of where that person could move in the future if they're unblocked. So, um, you know, I think that's also an important part of our work is helping people understand transpersonal energy, uh, the energy that comes into our body through the chakras so it circulates, leaves our body through the aura. If it can't get out, what, what happens if, if all that energy is stuck inside us? What, what does hair do? I mean, how many of you include hair when you do a body reading? Okay, good, good. Okay, so hair acts as a cover. And it also uh, identifies where the person has a, a strong block. So, you know, this person, you know, his heart is a real issue. And even here, the, the, the solar plexus, the, in a certain sense, your life path. You know, he's covering up something about his life path. 